Hello pilots, this is Infinite Flight Official Test Pilot David come to you from Flying Development Studios with a little tutorial to talk over some of the new features in the user interface that have been added to Infinite Flight available in both solo and live modes. It's the instrument dock and it's down here on the bottom where you're used to seeing your replay button or the pages button to show the HUD and toggle through the mini map as well as going to the main map and the systems buttons. Same thing here, except I'm going to touch airspeed. And on airspeed, this is my instrument dock, just like the HUD. Again, I'll show you there. Oops, sorry. Hold on a second. Let me fix that. There we go. All right. There are seven docks at the bottom, as you can see. Airspeed, ground speed, heading, yoke, vertical speed, g-forces, load. May read out completely different when you make your alterations, but I'll cover that customization part here a little further going forward. So for the first one, I have airspeed. And this is my first page of the five possible that I can select instruments from to put in a particular dock station there, there at the bottom. So right next to airspeed, which I selected in the first one from that first page, I can put whatever I want in the next slot. So the second page being more of a navigation page, navigation-related instruments, such as uh, bearing, distance to next, distance to destination, I'll explain those a little bit more later, but right now I'm going to stick to that first page with the airspeed and ground speed. The center page is weather, visibility, pressure, temperature, winds, weather. See? So I got my visibility set there. I'll move down the line a little bit more. The fourth page is more of... Uh, settings relating to your live session, such as your network type, server, and connection status. We're in solo mode, so it's not relevant here, but you might want to be aware of that for when you're on live. And the final fifth page has time-related information. Local time, Zulu time, as well as nearest airport is in there, flight time, and of course the helper yoke. You can do this in any order you want. Um, it doesn't matter which page you're on or which one of those instrument docks you're using at the bottom. You can make any selection in any of these positions that suit your needs and your preferences during your flight. As you can see, it's pretty comprehensive. Uh, everything you need is going to be right there and easily, t easily selectable. They'll remain there until you change them. But what's really cool is if you leave the HUD view or the virtual cockpit and go to an external camera view, it's still there, just like you had it. So this comes in very handy if you're flying with an external view and you want to know things like your ground speed and altitude at ground level or sea level, all the neat stuff. The replay is the same, as you can see. Uh, go slower, faster. What's important to remember is that when you speed your replay up, like so, you lose audio. So if you go from 1x anywhere else to 2x, 4x, and so on, you lose the audio. So keep that in mind. You might want to remember that. For not. And of course you can still seek, and you can hit live to just return right where you are at that time. Now what's neat is navigation. I like how this really uh, comes together. You can select your first waypoint, of course, as normal from the map view while in the map page. That is, that is. Okay, so I selected my first waypoint, but I want this to be visible to me on my HUD in the instrument dock or in the instrument dock when, whether or not I have the HUD. So I've selected distance to next, which is in this case just one waypoint. Makes it very easy, but what if I add another one or a whole bunch more? Well, let's not go too far ahead, just one more. As you can see, I could go through. Hold on a second here, let me get that again. There we go. Distance to next or distance to destination. So I put distance to destination. I basically just used it to replace distance to next. And then I move over left where it says visibility, and I'm going to put distance to next right there. So I've got both. Distance to destination, of course, being the total distance of your whole flight, including all waypoints. 
Now you can do this in any order you want. There is no wrong way to do this. There is no right way to do this. There is only your way to do this. So experiment and have some fun with it. And I think you're going to really enjoy it. So again, this is David with Infinite Flight, your official test pilot, signing off and saying, see you in the skies.